Most murders are dumb. They're random, the result of drug abuse or rage. Or they're gang-related, feuding teenagers who end up shooting each other. But every now and then, there comes a killer with a plan. A guy, sorry ladies, it's almost always a guy, who wants to carve his name into the public consciousness. There's Jack the Ripper in London, New York as Son of Sam. In San Francisco, it's the Zodiac. Starting in the late 1960s, the Zodiac sowed fear in the Bay Area. Part of the reason is that his killing didn't fit a pattern. He used both guns and knives, hunted both men and women. Even the number of victims is in dispute. He claims dozens, but the police say five. The Zodiac taunted San Francisco for years, sending coded puzzles that promised to reveal his identity. And even today, people everywhere are still trying to crack the case. Kevin Fagan has been on the San Francisco Chronicle crime beat for decades. You've been 15 years now, the sort of Zodiac expert at this paper. What does that mean? I mean, it's a 40-year-old case. Is that still pretty active? Yeah, they're still active. The San Francisco Police Department has a cop on it. Vallejo has a cop on it. Uh, Napa has a cop on it. They're, they still take tips. They still look into it. I get tons of stuff. It's, it's, it's kind of fun, because the stuff you get in the mail goes from <laughs> crazy to interesting. Because it's not solved. It's the, it's the most famous unsolved case. That and Jack the Ripper. Oh, Everyone likes a mystery. And boy, this is a this is a great one. Because, and and it even has clues that Joe Schmo sitting at the kitchen table can figure out. Yeah, that's different. The first two confirmed victims of the Zodiac are teenagers in a lover's lane, shot and killed in December of 1968. On the following Fourth of July, he shoots another couple in a parking lot. Standard enough, as serial killers go. Where the mystery comes in is that the Zodiac wants to match wits with the world. He sends notes to three Bay Area newspapers. Each note includes a piece of a cryptogram. Do you think the decision to print those letters and the cryptograms, was that an easy one for the paper? No, no, never easy. You've got to talk with the cops about this stuff and, and get their viewpoint on it. Because on one hand, publishing that stuff encourages other crazy people out there. But on the other hand, there was a school teacher and his wife who cracked one of the Zodiac uh, cryptograms. Sure. And that wouldn't have been possible unless, you know, we printed the cryptograms. Zodiac it becomes this legend, right? But at first, there's just a couple of dead bodies. How does he go from being somebody who left a couple of dead bodies to the Zodiac? Well, he had some talent at marketing himself. I mean, that's what it, comes, <laughs> that's what it boils down to. Is there are serial killers that killed 40, 50, 60 people, mm -hmm. and they're not famous, and it's because they didn't know how to market themselves. I mean, today, he'd probably uh, have his own reality show. He'd be one of these self-created celebrities. His goal seemed to be commit acts that were bad enough that they would get news and, and that people would want to read about him and find out who he was. A few months after the cryptograms, a couple of college students are having a picnic when they're surprised by a man in an executioner's hood. The Zodiac ties them up and stabs them repeatedly. The girl dies. The boy lives. The killer writes the dates of his three attacks on the door of the couple's car. Then he calls the police, reports the murder, and vanishes. The attack is so brazen and so different. It doesn't fit a pattern. This is Presidio Heights. Calling it an expensive neighborhood is like saying San Francisco has a few hills. Bad things are not supposed to happen here. And yet, at the intersection of two of the most upscale streets in the city, a serial killer shot a cab driver in the head. He picked him up in the theater district, 
And Zodiac rode in the front seat. And I found out just a couple years ago from his sister, the victim's sister, that Paul Stein did not allow anybody he did not know in the front seat. And Zodiac rode in the front seat. Then I found a police report that backed it up. They found evidence he was in the front seat, never in the back. So somehow he charmed the guy. Or he knew him. Or he knew him. He knew him. Again, this murder is different, and I think that's part of the point. He wants to send a shiver of fear down the whole city's spine. He wants everyone's attention. See, this is just my opinion, but I don't think the Zodiac was all that into the killing. I think he was after something else. He could have made sure all the victims died, you know, and he didn't. He could have made sure he didn't leave any fingerprints. He could have made sure he didn't leave tire tracks or footprints. For him, I wonder if it's more the, the chase in the game that was the point. Game is the right term that you used because he hunted people and, and uh, that wasn't enough excitement for him. So apparently he had to go out there and, and create more excitement by making it a challenge. Over the next years, the Zodiac writes more letters. He threatens to blow up a school bus. He claims dozens of murders. And he sends puzzles. It's those that make the Zodiac so compelling. He's like something stuck in your teeth that you can't quite work free. And we want the puzzle. More than that, we want the solution to be a bombshell. The Zodiac is Richard Nixon. The Zodiac is Lady Gaga. In the late 1960s and early 70s, the Zodiac Killer murders an unknown number of people in the Bay Area. At least five, but more than 30 if you believe him. He also sends cryptograms to the papers, each with a promise that solving the puzzle will reveal his identity. He's a real life Riddler. People have been trying to crack the Zodiac's code for 40 years. But only the first of his cryptograms has ever been solved for sure. Which means there are two paths the Zodiac could have gone down. He could have crafted brilliant cryptograms that really do reveal his identity. Or he could have broken the rules of real puzzle making and just strung together nonsense to endlessly frustrate the world. What the Zodiac Killer did in the one puzzle that people have solved is he made spelling mistakes. That could be him just making a mistake in his own code. More likely, I would say, that he, he did those intentionally to make it harder to crack the code. I mean, honestly, as a, as a writer and not as a guy who creates puzzles, my suspicion, he got more fun knowing he was messing with everybody. That's my gut. I think the puzzles are nonsense, a joke on the world. But plenty of people disagree, and since he was never caught, the obsession with him hasn't waned. The San Francisco Chronicle's Kevin Fagan is still inundated with theories. Okay, so here's my Zodiac file over here, the main one. <laughs> the main it's, one. Uh, yeah. yeah. This massive drawer. This one just came in. This guy's pretty, uh, you know, he's, he's fairly credible. I just don't, I'm not convinced that the Unabomber was the Zodiac. Here's, and they feel like they've, they've beaten it, right? Oh, yeah. They're all convinced that they are absolutely have solved the case. This one says that he's the Zodiac. This card was sent to you. Yeah, I Xeroxed it, the real card somewhere else. You know, framed over your bed, I hope, for a good laugh. But Kevin thinks the answer to this one, like many of life's problems, just might be the simplest one. See, although they never made an arrest, the police only had one serious suspect in the Zodiac killings, a former teacher and convicted child molester named Arthur Lee Allen. They looked at him at the time, and some of the handwriting didn't match up. A lot of the other stuff did. He had a Zodiac watch. He was in the right place at the right time on a lot of the killings. And Robert Graysmith, a former cartoonist who took a deep interest in it and wrote some books on this, he thinks that Arthur Lee Allen's good for it. I would tend to think that that's probably the best theory of all. It seems like the best guess. For, yeah, for the moment. For the moment is the perfect phrase. Tom Voigt, for example, likes a journalist named Richard Gajkowski. Gajkowski probably knew Paul Stein, which could have put him in the front seat of that cab. And his nickname was Geik, which appears across the center of one of the Zodiac ciphers. After 40 years, is it possible we had the Zodiac's real name all along? Then again, 
Maybe we should be looking for someone named Otto, or Zoe, or Pat. Both Arthur Lee Allen and Richard Gajkowski are dead. But the search for the Zodiac isn't.